वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल कॉन्कर द फियर आर यू टायर्ड ऑफ स्प्रिंग बूट एप्लीकेशन स्लोइंग डाउन अंडर द हाई ट्रैफिक डज योर एप्लीकेशन स्ट्रगल टू हैंडल इवन द मॉडरेट लोड कॉजिंग यू द फ्रस्ट्रेटेड डीलेज एंड द पुअर यूजर एक्सपीरियंस इन दिस गाइड और इन दिस वीडियो वी विल वॉक यू थ्रू द प्रूवन स्ट्रेटेजीज एंड द टेक्निक्स टू ऑप्टिमाइज योर स्प्रिंग बूट एप्लीकेशन तो सिग्निफिकेंटली दैट इज गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव योर स्पीड scalability and efficiency so no more bottlenecks so no more wasted resources so let's deep dive into making your application your sluggish application into a high performance powerhouse wasting the time let's get started and jump into the video now spring boot performance optimization techniques so we already know like the video is about optimization in the spring boot applications so uh, it is essential to improve your responsiveness reduce your resources usage and have a high handling traffic efficiency right so that's the overall agenda of this particular video so what we will look into in this in this video is how to profile the configuration and application properties tuning database optimization caching asynchronous processing lazy loading connection pooling garbage collection and jvm tuning monitoring and profiling reducing the startup time now the very first thing what we will look into is profile configuration and application property tuning now you must be already aware that spring boot allow you to uh, you know have a different configuration for different environment using the profile okay so which is going to improve your uh, optimal performance right so you can create profiles like dev production or any other test environments right so any environments you have based on that you can have your environments profiles created now where do you configure this there is an application dot properties or yml what you create in the resource directory now you can set up them specific related settings for example you wanted to in the production right let's say you want to configure your data source uh, the database right so let's say uh, local host that is something which is level 306 right so you are have mentioned local host but it might be the real production url okay you can mention the port you can mention the username details and the dialects over there so when you are having this properties for the production <clears throat> what you can do is that you can also disable some debugging and the logging in the production for keeping your performance high so there are some you know only keep enabling only the logging the error and uh, you know uh, removing the banner or you need to disable the dev tools when you are try to restart right so this will takes too much of your application resource <clears throat> so make sure you do this now with respect to database optimization this is one of the important aspect when there is a trouble happening with your application so you know don't know where your application is degraded or performing low right so here are some of the techniques which we can improve it the very first thing is we can make use of jpa very efficiently so uh, when we try to load the resources or wait when we try to load the bean right so you can uh, make use of the eager or the lazy strategy so uh, fetching easy eager right so it is going to load a lot of uh, data unnecessarily right so make use of lazy to prevent unnecessary database query with whenever it is not required also right so we can make use of this particular fetch strategy as lazy so whenever you are going to look out for that particular underneath element then only the database uh, is going to fetch that now you can do the query optimization you can use uh, you know at the repository level you can use uh, the uh, spring data jpa that is uh, making use of the parity annotation right so here we are we can write the optimize query over here instead of you know depending on the jpql right and you can write your own customized query now we can also perform indexing ensuring that you know you can it is 
uh, applied to your frequently accessed queries, right? So particularly we have large data sets, right? So you can uh, specifically use indexing uh, along with the you know, JPA annotation. So we can use uh, at the rate index, you can apply that particular index over there and then you can give the details over there. So which will give a significant improvement. Then comes connection pooling. Nikari CP, you must have already heard. This is the default uh, which Spring Boot use. So ensure that you are making your application uh, configuration accordingly. So you, you define the pool size, you define the connection timeout, the idle timeout and the idle minimum idle time, right? Which will increase your performance of your application. Now, caching is one important aspect when it comes to improving your performance. So which will need your, which will increase, I mean, reduce your need to repeatedly, you know, querying the database unnecessarily or, you know, if there is some heavy uh, computation to be done, we can load that particular at the very starting, right? Now, how to do that? We can do that using the enabling the uh, caching at the root level, that is application level where your main class is there. Okay, that can be done in that way. Secondly, we can make use of the at the rate cacheable annotation where you exactly want that particular uh, API or you know the method to retrieve those particular detail and keep in the cache. So, uh, I mean, second time you are trying to retrieve the same thing, it will be fetched from the cache. Uh, now, for that, you need to do certain configuration. So in the properties that is we can either choose what kind of manager is it and we can make uh, like you know eh cache or redis let's say you uh, choose redis right and you can also keep like the time to alive after that you know it will have to refresh that right that all configuration which will make your uh, application really lay up to the expectation now asynchronous processing which can also reduce your waiting time to uh, where it happens for the HTTP request, right? So in the which is running in the background, right? Which can significantly improve that. So first uh, in Spring Boot, how the approach is that we have to first enable the uh, at the root level that is at the rate enable sync. Then only your application is going to perform or uh, in enable for the async or operations. Then what you can do is that uh, at the method level, you can define an as at the rate async uh, annotation, which is going to uh, make this particular as a separate thread and going to run it. So make sure you use this two annotation uh, when you are want to improve your performance. Secondly, uh, I think you need to do the configuration. So at the rate configuration along that, you know, on the top of that, you can actually, uh, you know, enable that, you know, at, at once in the configuration level so you can define this and then you can execute those things right so you need to uh, implement the asset configurer as well over here lazy loading so this is one of the you know uh, way to optimize the unnecessary data into the database so we, uh, we already discussed like you know this is going to be the lazy uh, fetch what we will use now connection pooling we already discussed now it comes garbage collection uh, and uh, jvm tuning so here when we are using the uh, garbage collection right which can also affect your performance especially when you have large uh, heap or you have, you have a high object which is going to churn right so tuning this garbage collection can reduce your pause and improve the performance right so what we can do is that you can there are some JVM flags you can add in your application dot properties or when you're starting your application. So Java orgs like you know hyphen xx you can actually have this particular and use which kind of garbage collector you can give the maximum or the minimum uh, uh, configuration over there, right? These are these are the like initial heap size, the maximum heap size or you know the limit the maximum uh, garbage collection the pause time etc you can give which can increase uh, your and optimize so that you know they are for the low latency applications so we can have this configuration done okay now you have some monitoring and profiling tools so these are also very crucial to understand uh, what is you know how your application is performing right and how it, and you can monitor is right this is very crucial so you can you make use of an act, Spring Boot actuator, which is uh, which gives you a certain endpoints to monitor and manage your application 
uh, like health, info, metrics, what are the beans, how many requests, right? This will give you all the information. Now, you also need to have this micrometer integration. This will allow you to, you know, certain uh, metrics to be downloaded and you can monitor on certain basis, right? Uh, you can have this Prometheus integration graphite as well, right? So you can enable those in your configuration as well. Now we can make use of the profiler uh, tool that is also Visual VM for profiling. Now this gives you a, like, a, you know, analyze your application, what is your performance, what is your memory usage. This, give, this gives you certain metrics where you can actually identify what is the bottleneck. Now, reducing the startup time. Now, this plays a very important time, important, right? Uh, where your application gets startups, right? So, reducing that time will significantly uh, improve your performance. Now, what you can do is that you can make use of the Spring Boot dev tool uh, uh, to uh, when you're trying to restart your application, right? So, it is not, it will not be enabled. So, make sure that whatever you change is making to enable this particular property to false so that your application is not every time restarting. Second, we can make use of the lazy uh, at the rate annotation. Uh, so this we already discussed, so we can enable for that particular bean. Then we can disable the configuration. Now what you do is that Spring automatically configures whatever the, it is finds in the class path, right? It scans the classes and the configuration beans and it automatically does the configuration. Now, if you disable certain or you exclude certain uh, data uh, beans, right? So you can actually uh, reduce the unnecessary loading which has to be done at the startup level. Uh, I hope mm, uh, this video was helpful to you to uh, uh, show you what exactly the performance improvement you can do to in order to make your application a uh, bit faster and increase your performance okay uh, if this video was helpful please don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon also watch out my other videos which are there in my playlist thank you for watching